Breaking news out of Southeast Houston. Police are looking for anyone who saw a van being dumped with a dead woman in the back seat. A security guard found her body at 945 last night while he was making rounds at the Sagemont Community Center on Hughes near the South Beltway. That security guard said the van was not there when he first made his rounds at 6 p.m. The vehicle was barely in the parking lot and not in a parking space. I'm sure that this 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 person had a family and we want to do what's right for her family and get her family justice. Police don't know how she died, but they do believe she was killed. This is the area known for that large white cross behind the community center. If you have any information, call police or Crime Stoppers. Turning now to COVID-19, an outbreak at a nursing home in Missouri City has a lot of families worried this morning. The city says there have been 19 deaths at the Paradigm at First Colony Home on Lexington. There are also more than three dozen cases. ABC 13's TJ Parker is tracking this situation for us, and these are some concerns. Yeah, very concerning numbers. Good morning to you, Stephen. There are 38 exact cases there at that nursing home, 19 of them deaths and 24 infected staff members. This, of course, taking place, as you mentioned, at Paradigm Nursing Home in Missouri City. Mayor Yolanda Ford sent a letter to Texas Health and Human Services officials requesting information on how to move forward. The city doesn't have local oversight and control of nursing homes. The state has that jurisdiction, which they which the mayor says has proved challenging, especially during the pandemic. 567 nursing homes and assisted living facilities in the area. 10% had at least one death. A handful of nursing homes in Harris County had double digit deaths. Now, as for that nursing home, Paradigm Nursing Home in Missouri City, officials there are monitoring that situation closely and working with the staff at that nursing home. TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. The Hispanic community in the Houston area is also being hit very hard by COVID-19. So tonight, ABC 13 is hosting a town hall called COVID-19 and our Latinx community. It will be moderated by our own Mara Moreno. Topics will include barriers to health care and testing and how the virus is affecting Latino workers who are overwhelmingly considered essential. You can watch the town hall tonight at 7 p.m. It will be streamed live on the ABC 13 website, YouTube page, and our connected TV apps like Roku and Fire TV. All right, let's talk some back to school. It is the very first school district in the Houston area to go back to class virtually. It's the first day of school like most of us have not seen before. ABC 13 reporter Charlie Essity is live outside Hastings High School in Leaf ISD. And Charlie, things are pretty different this time around. Yeah, Stephen, very different. Those students you just mentioned will be logging on to go to class today instead of being dropped off in front of their campuses. And so we are catty corner from Hastings High School. And I just want to point out this elementary school, Ewan's Elementary School, and you can see that sign they have posted. They have the start date and then right underneath it, it says all students attend online. So literally a sign of the times that we are living in. Now the campus is out here again, completely empty, just a strange sight for the first day of school. But of course, the pandemic has forced many districts to go virtual for at least the first few weeks of class. Now, the A-Leaf superintendent, H. Chambers, says that communication among students and parents and staff is incredibly important and is also reminding students about the virtual learning that will hopefully transition into in-person learning soon. Uh, help, help your child understand this is not an ideal situation. We know that the student wants to be in school. The parent wants their student in school. We want them in school. Uh, but we need for you to help uh, encourage the students and, and let them know this is not going to be a uh, forever situation. All right, and so what you're looking at right now is for a -Leaf ISD parents. If you're in need of meals for your child, please take a look at the information we have up on your screen for you. You can get curbside meal service for breakfast and lunch Monday through Friday between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. And this is open to only enrolled a -Leaf ISD students. Meals for elementary and middle school students can be picked up from that child's campus. And as for high school, ALC and Crossroads students, you can get your meals at either Elsick or Taylor High School. And then coming back out here, uh, out here live, you can see uh, Hastings High School there off in the distance. Just a couple of cars in the parking lot. Just a very, very surreal and quiet first day of school for uh, students here in A Leaf ISD. Charlie at City, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Strange times indeed, Charlie. Thanks. Well, as families get ready for virtual school this month, consider this a magic wand. 
could be the key to keeping your kids honest. A new study also found there may be more positives for plastic partitions than just your child's health. ABC 13 reporter Courtney Fisher is live to show us the magic of encouraging kids to make the right decisions. Courtney? Yeah, it's kind of a fun study, guys. Think of this magic wand as like a little nudge, a way to push your kids to do the right thing, and they may not even know they're choosing the right thing. It's not magic, it's actually science. When it comes to homeschooling her kids, I think um, everything is worth a try if it sounds reasonable. Yeah. Vicki Yip is all of us. Her dining room is their classroom, and she's figuring out ways to keep her two sons and daughter focused. I, I don't know if it's harder or easier to cheat virtually. What if we said it's as simple as waving a magic wand? Because that's what some experts say. Listen to this experiment. Children around five years old were given a math test. The answers on paper right next to them. A researcher simply waved an imaginary wand between the child and the answers, and that kept the child from cheating more times than not. Researchers tried another version of this, putting a clear partition between the child and those answers, and guess what? Same deal. Even though the kids could see the answers through the glass, again, most chose not to look. I think with younger kids, the nudge actually does work because they're very impressionable. Vicki says she'd try it with her five-year-old son, but her 10-year-old? I'm not sure a nudge is enough. I feel like a nudge and like a threat or something. I mean, Vicky's all of us, right? Well, she does make a good point, though, and it's one that child psychiatrists agree with. She says that, yes, it would work on her younger child because that child is more impressionable, and it's all about kind of pleasing adults at that age. Meanwhile, the 10-year-old scientists say probably wouldn't work for her because at that point, they're old enough to form their own opinions and expectations. For now, reporting live, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. <laughs> In I other cheated. words, they are over us as parents. <laughs> I would have cheated when I was five. Yeah. I am positive of that, Courtney, but I was a bad kid. I love that study, though. <laughs> well, someone needed to wave a magic wand, Stephen. That's and true. And maybe you wouldn't have. I'll get a time machine. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Courtney. Well, today, the Astros teaming up with Tito's Vodka to hand out thousands of bottles of hand sanitizer. The distillery, as you may remember, switched gears during the start of the pandemic so they could make that sought after product. They'll hand out 27,000 bottles in the parking lot today, parking lot C from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Each car can get three bottles and the first thousand cars will also get a replica trophy for the 2019 American League pennant. Very cool for Astros fans. Okay, let's check in with Alita Loresca talking weather. Yeah, Stephen, we've got uh, more heat than storms for today. Not really working with the disturbance, but there will be a few spotty rain showers along this frontal boundary. Uh, that Gulf moisture blowing back in along that sea breeze. So there could be a few of you that get a cooling rain shower, or even an isolated rumble of thunder. Those rain chances, however, for today remain low at 20%. Everybody feeling that heat. Look for temperatures to top out in the upper 90s, but when you factor in the humidity, the feels like temperatures ranging anywhere between 100 to 107 in the shade. Triple digit heat out west where you just haven't seen a whole lot of rain the last several days and you're not expected to. Overall, the next seven days, this heat ridge will push most of this moisture well out to the east. With the sea breeze blowing in, there could be a stray shower or two, but I'm not promising you much. You can see Saturday, Sunday, 20% chance of rain. The latest models are trying to show a little bit more of a disturbance on Sunday, so that may have to come up a little bit. Otherwise, it's just going to be hot and dry around here, humid with temperatures just below the century mark. All right, Alita, thanks and thank you all for joining us. We hope you have a great day.